Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you today? I'm um, fine. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Yancy. How was the weekend? Relax. <laughs> oh, relax. Nice. And uh, Monday? What about Monday? Um, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice cansado? Tired. 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 Oh. Okay, was that tired Monday? Very busy? With a lot of work? ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, arreglar la casa. <laughs> Cambiar la casa. <laughs> oh, you move? No, no, no. O sea... Mm. Cambiar uh, de un lado a otro, hacer una reestructura de la casa. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you were making some arrangements at home. You were yeah. cleaning and dusting, moving things from other positions. Okay. So you yes. reorganized the furniture. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, I like to do that. <laughs> I do the same. <laughs> Like every what every three or four months, I I reorganize everything. Yes, and it's nice because you move everything, you undust everything, and and for some reason, it's apparently uh, it makes the house to look spacious, like bigger. Uh, yes, yes. Le da otro, le da otro. ¿Cómo se dice otro? Ambiente. Uh -huh. yes. A ver si no me pierdo en la noche. <laughs> yeah, be careful with that. Okay, Así so. Que I, cansada. Oh, that's tired. Yeah, when I, I feel, uh, I get tired when I do that too. Yes, okay. I feel the same. Okay, <laughs> so, but it's, it's, it's nice. It's funny. It, it worth it. Vale la pena. It worth it. Yes, my mm. house. Um, it's beautiful now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ready for the celebrations and <laughs> the party. <laughs> yeah, sí. you're ready for the holidays now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. sí. Good. Okay, I hope that everyone has had a very nice weekend and a good Monday. So thank you so much for being here, for being on time. Um. In the previous class, we were practicing um, uh, talking about foods and etc. And I remember that we were about to practice one conversation. So we're going to listen to the um, audio program of that uh, conversation. And after that, we're going to practice it. And let's see, maybe we can find new vocabulary. Who knows? So I'm sharing the screen with you. I'm going to share sound here. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's the topic is may I take your order? Someone is ordering a meal. So we're going to listen. And then you tell me if there's any question about this read in a conversation, maybe vocabulary or pronunciation. So let's listen. Page 88. Exercise 6. Conversation. Ordering a meal. Part A. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes. I'd like the spicy fish and rice. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes. I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Is there any question about vocabulary or pronunciation? Miss, uh, what is dressing? Dressing, aderezo. 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 Uh-huh, aderezo. 
como un aderezo ranch, aderezo César, una salsa chipotle, <ríe> yes. uh -huh. salsa rosada. Algunas ensaladas son ricas con salsa rosada. Das son aderezos. Salsa así sería como eh, roll, eh, tau, creo, o no. Uh, ah, yeah, sí, sí, que no la tat. Ajá. Rosadas, o would be pink. Ajá, pink. <ríe> Ah, pink, pink, yes. uh -huh. pink sauce. Pink sauce, ajá. Uh -huh. Any, uh, what is your favorite dressing, Fernando? Uh, my favorite dressing is ranch. Ranch, ranch. okay. Yes. Yeah. I like Italian, Italian dressing. All right, any other question? Teacher, mm -hmm. could I listen again, please? Sure, I'm going to play it again. Page 88, exercise six, conversation, ordering a meal. Part A, listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the spicy fish and rice. All right, and would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other question? Teacher, uh, mm -hmm. it's like spicy fish. <laughs> Spicy. Spicy, fish and rice. Uh, spicy es picante, como especiado, como con especias picante. Como condimentado. Condimentado, ajá. Teacher, uh, what is pronounced? Uh, vinaigrette or vin vinaigrette? Vinaigrette. 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 Vinaigrette, es, es no tan I, es entre I y E. Vinaigrette. Uh -huh. Vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Uh -huh. Vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Yes, you can say vinaigrette. Uh, vinaigrette. 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 Uh -huh. vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Any other question? Eh, yo tengo una duda. Teacher. Uh -huh. En spices, porque spice es de picante, ¿verdad? Y de ¿Sí? condimentado creo que estamos hablando de otro, de otro contexto. ¿Sería lo mismo? Eh, si vemos, eh, por ejemplo, la paprika, la pimienta, todos esos condimentos son picantes o especies que uh, pueden hacer que algo sea picante. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, si dicen la Thai food, lleva un montón de especias que al final la hacen picante. La hacen picante. Uh -huh. Porque no se refiere a Chile, ¿verdad? Eso. No, no se refiere a Chile. Uh -uh. No, porque cuando es che, al, al, que hace algo es picante de, 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 por el Chile, es hot. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Gracias. Ok. ¿Has any other question? Any other question? Okay, if no there are question. no more questions, we're going to listen in part B. It says, listen to the server, talk to the next customer. What does she order? You can take notes in your notebook and, say, and um, listen for the details. What does the other customer order? I'm going to play the recording twice so you can get the order. Page 88, exercise six, part B. Listen to the server talk to the next customer. What does she order? Are you ready to order? Yes, I think so. I'd like a cheeseburger, please. Would you like today's special? A cheeseburger and fries? Uh, 
No fries for me, but I'll take a small potato salad. Okay. Anything to drink? Yeah. I'll have a large iced coffee, please. And how about some dessert? We have pie, cake, and ice cream. No, thanks. I'm trying to watch my weight. Page 88, Exercise 6, Part B. Listen to the server talk to the next customer. What does she order? Are you ready to order? Yes, I think so. I'd like a cheeseburger, please. Would you like today's special? A cheeseburger and fries? Uh, no fries for me, but I'll take a small potato salad. Okay. Anything to drink? Yeah. I'll have a large iced coffee, please. And how about some dessert? We have pie, cake, and ice cream. No, thanks. I'm trying to watch my weight. Okay, what did the customer order? Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Burger. Cheeseburger. With potato, with little potato. And large and coffee. Green large coffee. Coffee. Uh, green. Uh, what size of coffee? Large coffee. Large. Drink like large, large coffee. Coffee. Was it hot or iced coffee? Uh, iced coffee. Oh, iced coffee. Iced coffee. Okay. Let's check your answers. Oh, there you go. So, yes, a cheeseburger, a small potato mm -hmm. salad, and a large iced coffee. So, good job. Good with this listening. So, let's see. Um, I sent over the presentation so because I included uh, some more information about the auxiliaries. Uh, we have used them. Um, we have been using will we have used wood in previous occasion and there were some questions about them we have used um, may can could and uh, should uh, so those are the ones that we have used so far i don't know if you have ever used the auxiliary must up to shall no? Okay, here we have this little chart um, about when do we use will or when can we use would. In this case, uh, we have will, it's going to be used for willingness or certain prediction or promise, would for request, invitation, or making arrangements. Is there any question about the will and would? Is a uh, when use will and when use would. Uh, so here it says willingness, certain predictions or promise, also for spontaneous decisions. Okay, so um, it's as different that will e would. Uh, I had to say will as el pasado, uh, would as el pasado de will. Yes. But uh, cuando vamos a usar estos modals auxiliaries, vamos a usar will eh, para expresar eh, un deseos, like willingness, okay? Um, algo que queremos, right? Uh, por ejemplo, I will order a salad, right? I'm willing to, uh, to order salad, etc. Certain predictions para predicciones también, pero en este caso las predicciones es cuando no es como... Um, no estoy muy segura de que se vaya a dar o no tengo alguna evidencia que me indique, ¿verdad? Entonces, para ese tipo de predicciones se usa will. Y también como para promesas, como decir, um, I will help you with your homework tomorrow, ¿ok? I promise I will help you tomorrow with your homework. El would se utiliza para request para pedir algo, por ejemplo, en este caso de que estaba ordenando, I would like to have a salad. Yo quisiera o, o, o a salad, etcétera. 
También vamos a usar would para hacer invitaciones. Eh, como por ejemplo, um, would you like to go out for dinner tonight? Or what would you like to do? Hagamos los arreglos, ¿verdad? ¿Qué te gustaría hacer? What would you like to do? What would you like for me to order for next uh, weekend, etc. So, is that clear now, Fernando? Yes, miss, it's clear for me. Mm -hmm. And this is practice. Es, es práctica. Por ejemplo, ven, acá está my, que ya lo vimos, might. So, tenemos may y might. Uh, so, it says permission or future possibility. Ok. Utilizamos um, para pedir permisos, por ejemplo, cuando decimos may I go to the restaurant. Ok. Estamos pidiendo un permiso para ir al baño. May I. So, we use may with permission. Um, eh, pero ven que might y, y may, ambos dicen future possibility. Los dos dicen future possibility. Entonces, ¿cuándo, ¿cuál es la diferencia? La diferencia es que si yo quiero transmitir que esta posibilidad es fuerte, voy a usar eh, may. Si la posibilidad es baja o, o débil, voy a usar might. Por ejemplo, si me dicen... Um, um, o, o si yo quiero decirle, ah, yo, eh, hay posibilidad de que yo llegue mañana tarde. Pero uh, si la posibilidad es bien fuerte, entonces yo tendría que decir, hay, ¿cuál? ¿May or might? May. 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 Uh -huh. Digamos que bien... Uh, Vi acá en las noticias que van a estar trabajando en carretera. Entonces yo le voy a avisar a mi jefe que podría, hay una posibilidad para mañana de que yo llegue tarde. Entonces eh, yo quiero que el que, que tenga casi seguro, ¿verdad? Entonces voy a usar may. I may be late tomorrow. Ok. I may be late tomorrow. Entonces, el receptor del mensaje sabe que la posibilidad de que yo llegue tarde mañana es fuerte. Pero yo digo, mm, están trabajando en la carretera, pero como ya me di cuenta, tal vez puedo madrugar un poquito más y me voy a algún lugar que tengan desayuno a las 5 de la mañana, a las 6, etc. Pero de todos modos le voy a avisar a mi jefe porque, ¿y qué tal si no lo logro? ¿Ok? Pero mmm, tal vez no, tal vez logro llegar temprano, pero por si acaso la voy a avisar. La posibilidad de que yo llegue tarde es mínima porque estoy con el deseo de madrugar, ya que me di cuenta a tiempo, entonces yo le digo a mi jefe, I might be late tomorrow because this in this situation, but I will try to leave the house early. So, but just in case, I might be late, remember. Mm -hmm. Esa es la diferencia con ellos dos. Ahora, can y cool, que fue el que estuvimos discutiendo la vez pasada, eh, porque hay confusión, dicen, ok, pero cool es el pasado de can, sí, pero cuando los usamos como modal verbs, eh, tienen como diferentes eh, formas de, como de um, interpretarlo. El can lo vamos a usar solo para habilidad y request para pedir un permiso, para pedir algo, para request. Ahora, el could, eh, past ability. Can es habilidad en presente. I can, um, por ejemplo, podemos decir, I, I can make uh, almost all kind of uh, dishes. Puedo cocinar casi cualquier tipo de plato, etc. Esa es una habilidad en el presente. Ahora, decíamos que el could, es past ability. Si lo vemos como pasado de Ken para expresar habilidad, entonces tendría que hablar de una habilidad que yo tenía en el pasado. Ya no la tengo. Ok, like for example, I could run fast when I was young. No more. Uh, now for suggestion. También para su sugerencias, que es lo que estuvimos viendo. Eh, you could try... This ointment, podrías intentar o podrías usar esto para aliviarte, etc. Y también future possibility. 
una posibilidad en el futuro, usaríamos could. Ok, si se fijan, las, los usos de could son eh, de alguna manera diferentes a los usos de can. O sea, no es como quedarnos solo con la idea de que could es el pasado de can, está muy corto. Ahora, must y ought to es como, eh, eh, este moda lo podemos interpretar como debes. Debes, pero... Um, eh, must es una necesidad o obligación. Must. Una obligación, por ejemplo, podría serle, tú debes estar a tiempo en your classes, en tus clases. You must be on time for your classes. Esto es una obligación, ¿verdad? Estar a tiempo. Eh, en su trabajo, por ejemplo, usted tiene que mandar el reporte antes de las 8 de la mañana. You must send the report before 8 a.m. This is obligation. Ok. El must, esto es para expresar obligación, este modal verb. Y ought to también es para expresar obligación, pero va orientado a un deber moral, a lo que es correcto, ¿verdad? So, ought to, it's what's right or correct. Por ejemplo, you say, you ought to obey your parents, ¿ok? Tien, debes de, de obedecer a tus padres, debes de ayudarles, you ought to help your parents, ya. Yeah. Moralmente estamos obligados, ¿verdad? Yes. So, Uh, any question with most and all two? No questions? Okay, share is like for offer or suggestion, okay? So for an offer, so you can say, um, okay, uh, we have a party tomorrow. Shall I bring some? Something to drink, yeah? So I'm offering something to drink. So I'm offering to bring something to uh, br uh, bring to the party. Now, should is for advice or uncertain prediction. Ya estuvimos utilizando should para dar consejo, ¿verdad? O para dar sugerencias. Lo estuvimos usando en el ámbito del um, cuando son... Um, Request para cuando nos están preguntando qué debería de hacer, en qué situación. Ah, tú deberías de intentar esto. You should try this and this. Uh, suggestions, basically. I don't know if you have any question. Uh, teacher can repeat, use, uh, must. Okay, sure. Eh, must es um, deber, debes de hacer esto, debes de hacer aquello. So, recuerden que siempre después de un modal verb le sigue un verbo. Entonces, eh, por ejemplo, si quiero decir, uh, tú debes, esto es el must es como necesidad para expresar necesidad u obligación. Es como tenemos que hacerlo a ley, ¿verdad? Porque lo necesito hacer o porque es mi obligación. En ese caso voy a usar must. Si me voy a referir a algo que debo de hacer o que es obligación. Eh, por ejemplo, le dicen a uh, um, la persona ahora, por ejemplo, están con gripe, etcétera, ya no los dejan ir al trabajo. Le dicen, you must stay at home. You must stay at home. Debes de estar en casa, ya sea que le den incapacidad o trabajando desde casa, etc. You must work from home. You must stay there. Or uh, debes de estar temprano en el trabajo. You must be on time for work. You must send the reports on time, etc. Any other question? Eh, el shall, ¿en qué momento se va a ocupar? Uh, para hacer ofrecimientos o sugerencias. Ok, gracias. Thanks. Any other question? Uh, 
Ok, uh, so algunos de estos modals son los que hemos estado viendo anteriormente. Ahora vamos a eh, estar usando will y would para lo que viene ahorita a continuación. So we're going to watch the video which is in the platform. And then you tell me if you have any additional questions or if, if you want more examples on the video, etc. Just let me get ready. One second. Okay, I found it. Okay. Nice to have you back in class. Please take notes on wood and will. Try to understand how they are being used. After the explanation, we have some questions for you. Please answer them on our discussion box. Modal verbs would and will for requests. What would you like? I'd like the lamb kebabs. I'll have a small salad. What kind of dressing would you like? I'd like blue cheese, please. I'll have vinaigrette. What would you like to drink? I'd like an iced tea. I'll have coffee. Would you like anything else? Yes, please. I'd like some water. No, thank you. That'll be all. Contractions. I'll equals I will. I'd equals I would. We presented would and will in a conversation and then on a previous chart. But now let's work on them. Using would to make requests. Would is used when we make requests in English. It is a more polite way to make your requests to someone, especially when you're not familiar with. We can use would directly at the beginning of the question. Would plus subject, plus like, plus infinitive verb, plus complement, plus question mark. Example, would you like to drink tea? Or, we can use it with a WH question word. WH question word, plus would, plus subject, plus like, plus infinitive verb, plus complement, plus question mark. Example, what would you like to eat for dessert? Also, in this opportunity, we're using would to answer questions. What would you like to drink? I would like a soft drink. Or, I'd like a soft drink. Did you notice the position of would in the answer? That's right, it goes exactly after the subject. How to answer using would? Subject plus would plus like plus complement. Now let's pretend we're in a restaurant and you are the waiter. This is my response. I want you to think on the question. I like apple pie. I like coffee. Now it's my turn to ask you. Please respond using would. What would you like to eat? What would you like to have? Ice cream or chocolate cake? Okay, uh, so that was the video about the uses of will and would. So let me share the material again with you. Is there any question about the uh, grammar explanation on the video? All clear? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, as everything is clear and there is no questions, we will move uh, on. Teacher, and, uh -huh. teacher uh, what is I, I like, for example? 
Y esa, esa está contractado, entonces, ¿qué es ID? Uh, here it is. Can you see my screen? Uh, this, for, for example, I like. What is ID? I would. Ah, I would. Ajá, uh -huh. can you see here in the screen? I would. Yes, I can hear. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd, it's I'd, I would. I'll, I will. Um, teacher, ¿y se puede utilizar would? Así, contractado, I, I'll, I, o I'd. Ajá, uh -huh. I'd. Ajá, uh -huh. encontré las dos formas o hay alguna forma que dijéramos esta se contrata aquí o no? No, no, no. The only, div, the only rule, o sea, las contracciones se usan mucho en speaking y se pueden utilizar en informal, en, en escritura informal. Por ejemplo, en un texto, ahorita que estamos haciendo el ejercicio acá, en donde no se pueden usar contracciones es en escritura formal, como por ejemplo un correo del, del trabajo o en alguna um, uh, carta, solicitud, etc. no se usan las contracciones en escritura formal. Pero ya luego si es un texto o bueno, una estamos aquí um, or among friends, so yes, you can use contractions, eh, cuando se puede usar contracciones en escritura y luego en speaking all the time, siempre puede usar contracciones y es mejor acostumbrarse así a usar contracciones, porque es por eso que se oye que escuchan eh, se oye que hablan más rápido por ejemplo un americano no, no llegaría a ordenar y I would like to have no, I'd like to, I'd like to por eso es que se oye que hablan rápido porque usan mucho las contracciones. Uh -huh. Teacher, uh -huh. es, es en, la, en la palabra have, eh, o sea, entiendo que I, I like the fish and rice. Uh -huh. Me gustaría pescado y arroz. Uh -huh. Y cuando dice I, I, I have a small salad, eh, ¿Qué significado tiene have ahí? El have es, uh, acuérdense que el have tiene que ver con obtener o con tener algo, ¿verdad? Entonces uh -huh. es, um, por ejemplo, eh, lo que decía en el video es que si usamos would es más formal, ¿verdad? Y si usamos would lo acompañamos con like en el contexto de que estamos haciendo una... Uh, Estamos ordenando algo, ¿verdad? Estamos usando eh, para pedir, para ordenar, para invitar, etcétera. Entonces, sí, eh, es como decir me gustaría, me gustaría, pero no puedo usar, por ejemplo, eh, will con like, porque sería um, como, lo estaría haciendo como me gustará, una ensalada, eso no tendría sentido. Por eso si usamos will, el verbo que vamos a usar es have. Ajá. Yo, es como decir, ah, me quedaré con una ensalada. O oh, okay. ajá, tomaré, a, eh, tomaré. Es como decir, I'll take or I'll have. Como estamos hablando de comida, no podemos, eh, el mejor verbo como es have. Por ejemplo, oh. si también es have, acuérdense que lo usamos para decir eh, yo tomo mi desayuno o como mi desayuno. So you say, I have breakfast or, or I usually have breakfast at 8 a.m. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. El have también se usa mucho cuando estamos relacionado a algo de comer. Uh -huh. En este caso sería solo el verbo have. I will have para dar la respuesta de... What would you like, digamos? I will have. Ajá, tienen las dos opciones Solo para este responder. Ver. Ajá. Ajá, ah. pero si usa would, acompáñelo con Ajá. like. Y si usa like. will, acompáñelo con have. Ajá, uh -huh. ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other question?
Ahora, eh, lo otro que decía en el video de las preguntas es que se puede empezar con would o con una WH question. Ahí dependerá de nosotros. Por ejemplo, si yo solo, um, yo le doy la opción a la persona, como aquí, would. ¿Te gustaría algo más? Yes, please, or no, think. Entonces, si empiezo la pregunta con would, esa es una yes, no question. Quiere decir que la persona me puede corresponder con un sí o con un no. Por ejemplo, si yo le digo, oh, would you like soda? ¿Te gustaría una gaseosa? Te puedo, so, estoy invitándole, estoy preguntándole eh, con would, <ríe> iniciando con would. Would you like soda? So, la persona puede decir, yes, please. Or no, thank you, I'm watching my weight and it has too much sugar. So no, thank you. So, pero si es una open-ended question, que es una WH question, entonces primero va la WH word y después el what. Por ejemplo, si le pregunto, ¿a dónde te gustaría ir esta noche? Where, tendría que ir al principio. Where would you like to go tonight y a la persona me es, es, es abierta, la pregunta es para que la respuesta sea abierta uh, I would like to go to a nice restaurant, an outdoor restaurant, etc. pero si yo le digo would you like to, to uh, would you like to visit a museum today? yo say yes or no so it's a yes no question entonces, so, se pueden hacer de los dos tipos de pregunta con what. Se puede hacer una yes, no, y una information question or open-ended question. Uh, any question with this? Eh, con eso que mencionó de que hay preguntas que se responden con sí o con, o con no, y esto de que hay preguntas que se responden este, con el verbo, ¿en qué situaciones tendríamos que usar eso? Eh, no hay como una situación específica y depende de lo que usted uh, vaya, por ejemplo, si yo, uh, déjeme ver, ahí depende de cada quien, so no hay una regla. Entiendo, para depende del contexto, vea. Depende, depende del contexto del que se esté hablando. Depende de eso y de lo que yo necesite. Por ejemplo, si yo... Uh, si yo necesito un sí o un no de su parte, le voy a hacer una yes no question. Si yo necesito información de, de usted, le voy a hacer una WH question. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, vaya, ahorita yo necesito un sí o un no. Como estamos con el tema de invitar a las personas... Entonces, como yo necesito que me diga sí o no, entonces hago una yes, no question. Porque yo lo que tengo aquí es café. Would you like a coffee? No le estoy dando opción. Espérenme que me le faltó una F, siempre se me olvida. Would you like a coffee? Necesito un sí o un no. So you can say yes, please. Yes, please. Or you can reply, no, thank you. Okay. So you can say, no, thank you. Right? Solo necesito un sí o un no. Ahora, si yo necesito información, por ejemplo, entonces le preguntaría, ¿qué te gustaría tomar? What? I, what would you like to drink? ¿Qué te gustaría tomar? Ya la persona, si yo le pregunto qué te gustaría tomar, no me puede responder sí o no, ¿verdad? Yo necesito que me dé esa información, qué es lo que quiere tomar, ¿ok? What would you like to drink? Uh, I would like to drink, I don't know, something uh, like cold, maybe a, a smoothie, <laughs> a soda with a lot of ice, etc. Mm -hmm. 
Y esto acuérdense que existen en todos los tiempos gramaticales, incluso con auxiliares existen las yes no questions y las wh questions. ¿Está más bien está ahí, Fernando? ¿O necesita más ejemplos? Eh, no, Miss, es clear for me. Okay. For, eh, question, preguntas abiertas y preguntas con eh, double A questions. Esas son las abiertas que le dicen open-ended question or information question, son las que empiezan con una WH word. Es las que son what, when, where, esas son open questions o information question. Ahora, si empiezan con un auxiliar eh, o, o con un modal, en este caso, o si empiezan con el verbo be, esas son yes, no question. No hay opción. Empiezan Neces con, con el verbo como con el verbo, ¿cómo, cómo dijo? Con el verbo be, por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto, are you tired? You may reply, yes, I am, or no, I am not. Solo quiero saber sí o no. Entonces esas son como decir cerradas, ¿verdad? Yes or no. Esa puede ser su respuesta, yes or no. Ahora, si yo necesito información, es una open question o una WH question. Yo le pregunto, why are you tired? Ok, entonces aquí está abierta la respuesta que usted me va a dar. No me va a decir sí o no me va a decir no. Why are you tired? I feel tired because uh, I work a lot today and then I did my... Uh, homework and after doing my homework I start cooking and etc. So you give information. También con los maestros en el caso de que empiezan con el verbo, por ejemplo, el verbo to be, ¿verdad? Pero están otras que empiezan con auxiliares. Por ejemplo, el do, si es presente. Uh, so do you estas empiezan con el auxiliar de presente simple. So, uh, esta es una yes, no, esta es cerrada. Do you like onions? No, I don't. Uh -huh. Su respuesta va a ser sí o va a ser no. Esta es cerrada, yes or no. Ahora, so I can say una open. Uh, or <laughs> say, uh, what kind of vegetable would you like? Or what vegetables, no, no más. What vegetable food do you like? Entonces ahí ya no me puede decir, si yo le pregunto qué vegetales te gustan, no me puede decir yes o no me puede decir no. no start, so you give the information. Ah, I like a lot of vegetables, basically all. I love broccoli, potatoes are my favorite, I love tomatoes, etc. You start giving information. Any other question? <laughs> no teacher. No? No question. Okay. So we can continue here completing the uh, conversation based on what we have here. This is um, a conversation in a restaurant and we need to complete. Remember that the questions would use the auxiliary would and the verb like as we are inviting or requesting um, information. If we replied using would, we're going to use the verb like. If we reply using will, the verb is going to be have. Okay, so um, let's begin. For example, this one, the first is the question. And in this question, I am missing the uh, model. What is the model that we are using for questions? Would. 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 What? Uh -huh. So my question would be, what would you like to order? And the customer replies, I, and use the verb have. I'll. I'll have. 
I. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. I have the spicy chicken. Well, do you like rice or potato? Excellent. Would you like rice or potatoes? I would like, I like, rice. Rice. I would like rice, please. Five. Excellent. I'd or I would like rice, please. Mm -hmm. Next. And good. Would, would you like? like would you like? Uh huh. Anything to drink? And anything would you like to drink? anything to drink? Uh huh. I will just. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, just I'll, I'll just have a glass of water. I'll just have a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Would you like anything else? Uh -huh, excellent. Like Would you like anything else? Mm -hmm. No, that I will be. be, be all. Mm -hmm. for That'll time. be. That'll be all. No, that'll be all for now. Thanks. Would you like? Would you like? Like dessert? Uh huh. Would you like a dessert? Yes, I would like. I would like an ice cream. Uh, is dessert or dessert? Dessert. 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 Mm -hmm. Dessert. Yes, mm -hmm. because uh, dessert is the other. Yes, world. the dry place where nobody lives with a lot of sand. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, I like ice cream. What flavor? What flavor would you like? What flavor would you like? Would you like, exactly. Um, I'll, I'll, have I'll, I'll have strawberry, please. All right, very good job with this one. So before I forget, I'm going to check attendance and then we will continue uh, with the reading exercise to check vocabulary and pronunciation. So remember to turn on your cameras and say present when you hear your names. Let's see, nine to ten. Amilcar Edgardo. Amilcar Edgardo. Present teacher, excuse me. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Angelica Yamilet. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me see. Give me one second because I'm running out of battery here. So. Okay, let's continue. Um, Celia del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you. David Alberto. Present miss. Thank you. Edson Stanley. Present teacher. Thank you. Elena Noemi. Teacher. Sure. Thank you. Elvira Lorenza. Present teacher. Thank you. Fernando Alberto. Present teacher. Thank you. Iris Elena. Here, Miss. Thank you. Joanna Yesenia. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Daniel. Present teacher. Thank you. Mm, Jose Fernando. Jose Fernando. Karen Stephanie. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Selena. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Yasmin. Present. Thank you. Katerina Alejandra. 
present. Thank you. Kevin Alexander. Nidia Esmeralda. Present teacher. Thank you. Oscar Alejandro. Present teacher. Thank you. Reina Elizabeth. Present teacher. All right. Thank you. Ruth Noemi. Ruth Noemi. Samuel Isaac. Present teacher. Thank you. Yancy Astrid. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. Let's continue. All right. After that, we have a reading exercise here. So let's check for vocabulary, maybe. Okay. Oh, we have this listening exercise, yes. Okay, um, we're going to complete this. Uh, so you have to fill in the check, but if you have not the material in uh, paper, you can do it in the notebook. The idea is that we practice the listening. So I'm going to play the recording and you will listen to Rex and Hannah ordering in a restaurant. And you have to write what did each of them order, okay? So there is two in a restaurant and they will order the food and you will have to take notes on what they ordered. Is this clear? Yes, yes teacher. Okay, so I'm going to play it twice and you try to gather the information, the things that they ordered. If they order pizza, uh, iced tea, so you have to write down each person. Remember Rex and Hannah. So you have to listen. What did Rex order and write? Then what did Hannah write the order to? Page 90, exercise nine, listening. Let's order. Part A, listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. What did each of them order? Fill in their check. Hi, may I take your order? Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee. Cream and sugar? Oh, yes, please. And you? I'd like a chicken sandwich. And I'll have some chips. Oh, you call them french fries here, right? I'll have some french fries, please. All right. One coffee with cream and sugar and a chicken sandwich with french fries. Uh, anything else? Yes. I'd like an iced tea, please. One iced tea. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of desserts do you have? Well, we have pie, cake, ice cream, chocolate mousse. Ooh. What kind of pie do you have? I think today we have apple, cherry, lemon. Hmm. I think I'll have a piece of apple pie with my coffee. How about you, Hannah? Oh, maybe I'll have a piece later. Or I'll have some of yours. <laughs> <laughs> then it's one coffee, one apple pie, one chicken sandwich, an order of french fries, and an iced tea, right? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Page 90, Exercise 9, Listening. Let's order. Part A. Listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. What did each of them order? Fill in their check. Hi, may I take your order? Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee. Cream and sugar? Oh, yes, please. And you? I'd like a chicken sandwich, and I'll have some chips. Oh, you call them french fries here, right? I'll have some french fries, please. All right. One coffee with cream and sugar, and a chicken sandwich with french fries. Uh, anything else? Yes. 
I'd like an iced tea, please. One iced tea. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of desserts do you have? Well, we have pie, cake, ice cream, chocolate mousse. Ooh, what kind of pie do you have? I think today we have apple, cherry, lemon. Hmm, I think I'll have a piece of apple pie with my coffee. How about you, Hannah? Oh, maybe I'll have a piece later. Or I'll have some of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Then it's one coffee, one apple pie, one chicken sandwich, an order of french fries, and an iced tea, right? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Cup of coffee. Retarded cup of coffee cup with cream and apple pie. And how our bitter one chicken sandwich. French fries. French fries. Great. Nice and tea. One iced cup of coffee, coffee with cream and sugar. Apple pie. With cream and sugar. Anna, chicken sandwich. Coffee, French fries, sugar, and ice cream. Tea. Joanna, what do you have, Joanna? Joanna. <laughs> What is Rex order, Joanna? Rex ordered one cup of coffee with cream and one apple pie. Teacher, está hablando, que no se escucha. Teacher, okay. your microphone, the problem, no listening. Bien lejos y apenas se logran eh, oír que está hablando. Sí, no se me escucha nada. La Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank yes, you so much. So, uh, yes, uh, I don't know what is in my old piece. Okay, uh, so yes, Rex ordered coffee, cream, sugar, and a piece of apple pie. Thank you so much, Iris. Uh, Nelly, how do you have the, uh, what did Hannah order? Hannah's chicken order? Chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Yeah. French fries. Pie and gravy. And ice cream. Ice cream. Chicken sandwich. Uh-huh. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Nidia and Joanna. They have a chicken sandwich, french fries, and iced tea, which is correct. All right. And then, um, well, we have a reading here. I don't think that we're going to be able to finish. But yes, it is about to tip or not to tip. You know what a tip is? What is tip? Uh, what is it? Is it like a recommendation? Recommendation. Uh, propina. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, that is tip. Mm -hmm. Tip is propina. Pero sí, ajá. A veces dice, ah, te voy a dar unos tips. If I say, I'm going to give you some tips. Ajá, pero si, si es en el ámbito de un servicio, si estamos hablando de un servicio que alguien nos brinda, el tip significa propina. Pero sí, ajá, es otra definición para tip. Se escribe igual y todo, pero va a depender del contexto, el significado. Así que si hablamos de servicios, eh, tip es propina. Y tenemos ahí la lectura. Ese es the word tip comes from an old English slang that word means to give. It's both a noun and a verb. People in the U.S. usually tip people in places like restaurants, airports, hotels, hair salons. People who work in these places often get paid low wages. A tip shows that the customer is pleased with the service. Sometimes it's how It's hard to know how much to tip. The size of the tip usually depends on 
the service people such as parking valets or bellhop usually get smaller tips. The tip for people such as taxi driver and servers is usually larger. Here are a few guidelines for tipping in the United States. Taxi drivers, 15% of the bill, more if they help you with bags. Servers, 15 to 20% of the bill, if there is no tipping in fast food restaurants. Barbers or hairstylists, 15% of the bill. Airport porters or hotel bell hops is one or two dollars for uh, carrying each suitcase. Hotel doors attendant is one or two dollars for getting a taxi. Parking valet is two per parking a car. Hotel maids, two to five per night. When you're not sure about how much to tip, do what feels right. You don't have to tip for a bad service. And you can give a bigger tip if you, for a good uh, tip for very good service. Remember though, your behavior is more important than your money. Okay, now let me uh, know if there is new vocabulary or something from the reading that you would like to discuss. Nothing, no new vocabulary. Bill Hop. Bill Three. Hop. Um, Bill Hop. Bell Hop es un botones de los hoteles, el que le ayuda con las maletas, con el ascensor, ese es Bell Hop. Any other? How do you say Wait, wait. Wait, es un salario. Yeah, the hotel maid. Sorry? Hotel maid. Ah, hotel maid es una, uh, eh, como una empleada, eh, las que arreglan, ¿cómo le dicen? Las que arreglan la cama. La cama. La cama. La cama. cama. Esas son hotel maid. Uh -huh. Any other question? Teacher, eh, eh, low pay, no, low wage sería como bajos sueldos. Sueldos bajos, ajá, salarios bajos. Miss Herdeles. Sorry? Herdeles, Herdeles. Oh, this one, hair stylist. Esta? Hair stylist? Yes, mister. Yes. Ah, ok, estilista de cabello. Uh -huh. Estilista de cabello. Is there any other question about the vocabulary? How do you say guidelines? Uh, guidelines. Guidelines. Uh -huh. Guidelines. Eh, directrices mm -hmm. o lineamientos. Lineamientos. Mm -hmm. Miss, what is ballot? In parking ballot. Uh, Son los que parquean, como ballet parking, igual que en el acá. Ballet. Mm -hmm. ¿Pero qué, qué quiere decir en sí Una la palabra máquina. ballet? Son las personas que le ayudan a parquear. Es un noun, like, uh -huh, ballet parking. Aquí igual se llaman ballet parking. La persona que le ayuda a parquear el carro. Uh -huh. Parking ballets. Any other question? No more teacher. Okay. No question. Well, I hope that this vocabulary helps. And if there is any other question tomorrow, we can continue discussing about this reading. So thank you so much for joining and hope to see you to tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good